Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. We've got a gift from, okay, so Kat, Rajni, and Shane, we haven't gotten a throw of one of their bottles in ages, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I saw them like two or three weeks ago. This is bottle like 39. Oh. Which is like way more than trash tight, and that's... Yeah. Hey, you did a thing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is cool. We've done a couple of bottles from this distillery. Yeah. Uh, There's, <laughs> whoever has the most, at any given point, whoever has the most, they send something and it's just a shrug. It's like, what? whatever. All right, it's not <laughs> interesting anymore. Yeah. We ran out of an effects budget. What do we do? This is a Spanish distillery called Navazas Palazzi. Yeah, sounded like it was almost right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a, it's, it's not, the distillery is not Navazas Palazzi. This is no, uh, wait, a partnership. The distillery is not what? The distillery is. It's not, um, no, what was the name again? Navazas Palazzi. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just making it up. <laughs> um, anyway, no, this is a partnership. These releases are a partnership between a famous wine guy and a spirits producer, PM Spirits, okay. who is Nicholas Palazzi. Mm -hmm. And um, this is pot distilled, 100% Spanish barley. Cask strength. 11 years old, cask strength, mm -hmm. aged entirely in an Oloroso barrel. Interesting. It's whole life. Yeah, product 11 of Spain. 11 years old. Product of Spain. Um, yeah. That is the cheap, they, maybe they ran into the cork shortage like Everybody did. Yeah. This is the cheapest plastic, plastic mosaic. But it matches the bottle, actually. I think oh, it looks I mean, if you look, then no. Oh. Yeah, I think it went for a color scheme it's thing. It's a tragedy. Back whenever you couldn't get corks. It's, uh, These guys are real. They're all about no chill filtration. And so this is called Boda Punta release. How dare you? Which is a this sherry. Is a family channel. Oh, look at the color on that. It's brown. It's brown. <laughs> it is Not dark. like amber golden. It is very dark. It's like a tawny. So you said that was 11 years old? 11 years old. Entirely in? Entirely in an Oloroso barrel. Wow. Oh, that smells like sherry. It did, we're, we're drinking sherry right now. Wow, that's really good smelling though. Yeah, well if you like sherry then. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm not getting any whiskey. I just get the sherry. <laughs> Which I like sherry, it's fine. Well some of the really, well you know, it's even like raisin bread, ra like deep raisin candy. Right. And there's a tiny thread of that sulfur note. Yeah. Gosh, I have to reset my grid for flavors. Because I'm going into it, it's like whiskey notes. Nope. Nope, that's, that's weird. <laughs> it is way higher proof, if that helps. It's a lot more vibrant and sharp than yeah. a typical sherry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Bota... Uh, it's like a cask drink sherry. Bota Punta oh, yeah. is effectively translates to tip of the boot. Okay. And it's the name for the barrel that's at the very bottom at the edge of the whole uh, rack, because they age sherry a lot like dunnage, where okay. it's just stacked barrels. Yeah. And so you got these rows and rows, and they're all on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And so the one at the very, very end that gets the most air yeah. and uh, the most interaction with the environment yeah. is called the Boda Punta. It's also one that regularly gets sampled because it's easily accessible. Yeah, because you don't think of it being that big of a deal. I mean, air is air, but... It's yeah. going to have more light, it's going to have a lot more circulation, and then after 11 years, right. that adds up. It so shows more up oxidation, well. too. Yeah, yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. I'm kind of excited to get into it. I know. Me, too. Okay. Just real quick, real quick, one last thing. On the nose, I'm ever so slightly nervous, because every time I've gone to it, 
it gives me almost a little bit of a tickle in the back of the throat, makes me almost cough, and almost cough. <laughs> yeah, I get that same thing from the really heavy wine balconis ones, the yeah. that's oily kind of like. What is it? Uh, if it if it translates to the palate the mm -hmm. same way, yeah. it's going to be this thing where you swallow and then it just lingle, lingers as a tickle in your throat yeah. right here where it just feels like it's <laughs> Wait, clinging on. I can just on. smell it. I can already feel it right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, ready? Oh, that's nice. It's really good. Oh, damn. 53%. Oh, oh, oh. It's growing. Oh, you feel that? The dark fruit. Man, we are in, oh. it was like a Glendronic? Fudge, yeah, I was about to say Glendronic. Yeah. We're in Glendronic, but way more intense. Wow. It's if you mixed Glendronic with Balcotas, it's still growing. Wow. You feel that rolling? Yeah, that is. All the way down. I know, I know this is, this is, it meets the criteria for a whiskey, but in your mouth. That's dessert. This is not, this is not a whiskey. Uh, yeah, well. I am, yeah. Dude, I'm not getting like any kind of whiskiness from this. I love it. It's really you're good. Not, so you're not getting any hint of the malt. No. Nothing that says malt. Uh, the closest, closest whiskey is gonna be a Glendronic. But mm -hmm. even in the Glendronic, I'm finding the maltiness with all of these really dark, rich, like stewed fruits and all this stuff. But this, like I'm not getting the malt. I'm just getting that dark fruity quality from a Glendronic. This is what happens. Which is way sherry, closer guys. to sherry. I can't talk past it. My throat is still just like <laughs> like this glow. This, <clears throat> so people are often asking, like, can I have whiskey. an example of like a sherry bomb or something? This is a megaton <laughs> yeah. sherry bomb. I don't think I've had a more sherry forward Me whiskey either. than this. Wow. 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 It's in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Damn, dude. We have to do water on this. Yeah, just to see what it turns into? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little drop on the hand, not that I think I'm gonna be able to nose anything now, but eh. we'll see. Because it's so intense, all the retro nasal. I think it's just gonna overwhelm anything that I get on the hand. Going just raw, not even a dropper. Now there's nothing there. Did Sorry. you see that? Two drops. That was pretty good. I got two drops. Here, just like sprinkle some on my hand and then I'll use the fingies. Yeah. A sprinkle over there here, and then do. Oh, oh, gotta get it in there. One, one, two. I hope you didn't three, wash your hands. Before four, or five. You came in. I got five, six. Actually, there's six <laughs> drops in mine. Oh, hey, there's more of the sulfuric punchy note. All of a sudden, yeah. The sulfur wakes up. Everything else stays the same. Oh, I'm getting cherry hard candy on the top of the glass. Oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Isn't such, that weird? This is such a nerd. Ah. Do you ever take a step back? And think about how nerdy this this hobby is. Oh yeah, all the time. Go like this, mmm, that sulfur note. Go to the top of the glass, mmm, it's like a hard candy. Yeah. Cherry flavor. <laughs> Every once in a while someone asks me how to do something and yeah. I, I realize the answer is so dorky right. that I'm that I'm gonna have to do it anyway. Like someone's like, how do you reset your palate? And a part of my brain's like, oh no. <laughs> like we're in public and right. I'm like, well, I'll show you but we're all gonna feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had to drink a little bit of water because it was so evaporative in my throat, it's dominating. Going back to the nose after the water, it woke up the sulfur note. Mm -hmm. That tamed really quickly. I'm not getting hit with that sulfur note Oh, there note it goes. Anymore. It did yeah. go down. Yeah, the sulfur note tamed. But now it's a little more teriyaki. There's savory notes in there now. So I get what you're saying, but teriyaki is a very specific flavor for me. It is a sweet, savory thing, but mm -hmm. there's something a little bit, some type of glaze. Mm. Hmm. Balsamic glaze? Yeah, maybe like a, a reduction sauce yeah. of some sort. Mm. I liked it better without water, yeah. but it's a softer approach with water. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. Um, you know what, the, the texture of it wasn't hurting me before. I think you're having a little bit more of a throat issue yeah. than me. The richness of those dark fruits, that, the glendronic bit, mm -hmm. that really loses some steps once you start adding water. It's a good thing. It's okay. There's nothing riding on it. It's okay. It was, <laughs> it was a serviceable attempt. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, okay, man. I'm gonna let this sit for just a minute. All right. Well, we still got comments. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, come on. Wait. I'm gonna. We're gonna get, the comments, I'm sure, are very interesting. This is freaking 
One of the most interesting things I've put in a glass that is considered a whiskey, the stuff that is well off the beaten path, but still very enjoyable, mm -hmm. that's always fun. Anywhere in Amsterdam, just a note, Tikai isn't ice wine. Tikai is a region where wine is produced and some of those wines are dessert wine. Those mm -hmm. wines often use a lot of grapes affected by botrytis. Yeah, botrytis is noble rot. Is what yeah, it's a mold condition that dries out the grapes. Mm -hmm. Also called noble rot because of the, 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 the uh, was dehydration. We should have left the light on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, really. We turned this light off because we didn't think we needed it. Now we need it. <laughs> Dehydration, they have a lot of sugar and concentrated flavors, hence the dessert wines, although mm -hmm. there are also some dry decays, no dessert wines. Ice wines need to have frozen grapes that are passed when they are frozen, pressed mm -hmm. when they are frozen. For similar results, high sugar and oil concentrations, but no noble rot tasting notes. In Canada, the regulations are pretty strict on ice wines. Yep. You can't just freeze them by machines. Hope this helps clear up any confusion. So that we got somewhere in the neighborhood of like 30 people. So we have the ice wine. You commented on the Glenmorangie cake because it was Takai barrels. Yeah, so the ice wine people show. Apparently we got some ice wine lovers in there. Yeah, no, yeah. what it happened was uh, it's all wine people who are like, ah, uh, and actually none of them were a dick about it. Yeah. They were all like, hey, no big deal, but yeah, yeah. Takai is actually different than ice wine. Right. They both have a similar uh, directional effect with concentrated sugars, but they're definitely different tasting notes. So it, my guess is it's closer to like, if you're comparing Pedro Sherry versus Palacatado, it's like, oh, they're gonna head in a certain direction, but there's very different tasting notes in those things. Hmm. Takai is noble rot. Okay. Uh, I even got a text from Eric Waite, <laughs> who was like, hey, I'm lying on the couch watching videos because I'm not feeling well, <laughs> and I have nothing else to do, and Takai is not ice wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling well enough to use, use my fingies yeah. to correct you. Uh, and they're right. That, that's a worthy correction. Uh, Takai is not ice wine. I mixed up on the moment my head Canadian ice wines and Takai from Hungary. But uh, I did discover something when I went and was looking it up just because I was curious to remember where my brain was pulling info from. The fungus responsible for sh uh, shrinking the water in the grape that condenses the sugars, yeah. the noble rot, yeah, yeah, yeah. is in the same family as uh, athlete's foot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not athlete's foot, but it's in the same back, like fungi I'm just imagining. <laughs> I'm just imagining the discovery processes whenever they were like pressing the grapes with their feet back yeah, in the day. Yeah, and they're like. This turned out really good. Who, oh. who made this? It's like, oh God, Stevens, really? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Brave Volver Master. Probably just me, but after 10, 15 to 18 years, most whiskeys start losing the flavors that I like. Yeah. Okay. So, now, uh, from, it's going to vary from category to category. Yeah, but here's the interesting thing that I loved about that comment. Yeah. He is right. Even chemically, mm. the flavors start dropping. So, when you start aging a whiskey in a barrel, it starts eating the wood. Yeah. If you start with, say, Let's say 10 for easy math. Yeah. If you start with 10 flavor chemicals in the new make, mm -hmm. within a couple of years, it's hundreds and thousands of flavor chemicals. Oh, wow. They replicate on an order of magnitude yeah. up until about six to eight. And then oxidation starts removing oh. flavors. Oh. It's actually less flavors. Okay. So oxidation so. at first increases all of these things, mm -hmm. and evaporation increases all these things, and the wood tannins and all that, yeah. they increase all these things, and somewhere around six to eight, the wood keeps going up, but now, oxidation starts eliminating flavors. Okay, quick question. These new oak barrels? Mm -hmm. e either. Oh, even used? Period. It's mm. oxidation that's creating it. So yeah. it doesn't have exactly, I mean, the wood, if it's new oak, will dominate that difference. Yeah. Used oak will let it show up a little bit more, but it's oxidation that's creating mm. it and so, changing it. So going past six to eight, you're going to start losing some, some flavors, mm -hmm. but the kind of the softening and the maturing of the spirit, that's, that's what the people... oxidation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's actually... Removing you not everything. You know what? We we sell something, and I'm not sure if it's an exact analog, but Ugh. in the most janky experiments that we've done with oxygen and whiskey, mm -hmm. even making it as simple as going down, because we did like some bubble wands and stuff, right. even making it as simple as going down to just a wine aerator right. with the whiskey, it's like, holy hell, is that is that softer? Yeah. So you don't even necessarily need years for this process to happen. You can nah. aerate it with It'll them. be sloppy with the aeration, but it'll yeah, work, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why I think people will call it smooth. It actually is starting to remove complexities. Mm. And so some people really like older whiskey because 
it's more delicate and soft and smooth and yeah. it really is a loss of flavor com chemical flavor compounds. Interesting. And so someone who's like, I don't really like really old or scotch, I was like, I actually agree with that. Mm. I much prefer 10 to 15, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. is like a really great sweet spot for scotch for me. I'm going to need, I ran out. <laughs> for the toast, I need a little bit. Okay, that's fair. And I'm gonna pour enough so that you can just sit for a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. while we're shooting all the other things, because you might want to come back to it later Ask for it. like the real analysis yeah, of it. Just to really, really understand. Really understand. Give it its due. For your sake. Yeah. Even I mean, though, it won't be on camera, but. Even though this episode's over. <laughs> yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I'll fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.